The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. <laughs> raider Nation! Let's go! Let's go! Raider Nation! Let's go! Let's go! Raider Nation! Are you ready for some football? You ain't ready for no football! <sighs> What's good, everybody? That was so good. I'm going to just let it play real quick. I'm going to let something else play real quick, actually. Touch that to tangents. 150 episodes in, and I'm going to purposely uh, botch the intro because that's what Pete would expect me to do. Okay, well, enough of that, because, yeah, just enough of that. Touchdowns and tangents, uh, Kenneth Barry here in the house, also Grande. And, well, it's kind of interesting, because Serve's late, as always, and I'm going to get to that. We're, we're going we're gonna to uncover whatever is in Serve's uh, notebook, because she may or may not be a podcast plant. Or the podcast police, or Fed. I don't know. Who who knows? But Pete, uh, Pete's not here. He's currently at the Raider game, probably losing his mind because they scored late, and I guess they missed an extra point. Um, typical Raider stuff. But yeah, twenty six twenty four on the Chargers. I, I just don't know what to say. I think there's like sixteen seconds left in the game. Twenty six twenty four. And, like, this would be shocking, like, if the Raiders get to five games. Actually, Phillip Rivers threw another pick. I'm pretty sure it's game over. Um, Wow. Shout out to the Raiders. (sighs) I can't believe I have to do this. I simply want to point out that... The state of California just doesn't need the Chargers. Can we just be honest? They don't. Uh, oh, man. Hey, 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 It is final. The Raiders have beaten the Cal State Dominguez Hills Chargers 26-24 in one of the last games in the Coliseum. Oh, my goodness. Clellan Farrell, fourth overall pick, had two and a half sacks. Uh, Carl Joseph, former first round pick, got uh, the game ceiling interception. Eric Harris, undrafted CFL standout and journeyman, two picks. Uh, yeah, the Raiders D line went off tonight. I'm thoroughly shocked. And the fullback got a receiving touchdown. And Derek Carr didn't screw it up. Uh, I'm expecting a call probably from Pete any time now because he's probably losing his his just ever loving mind. But um, till then, we got some things to talk about. Uh, I'm gonna just get the Chargers thing out the way. So there, the owner pretty much stated, you know, hey, we're going to stay in LA. We're not going anywhere. Somebody suggested they should go to London, and he pretty much shot that down. And you know, they they lost to the Raiders, per the usual. When it really mattered. And now the Raiders are in second place in the AFC West. So that just calls for another quick celebration. Here we come, baby. 
just win, baby. Feel the storm of the cold autumn wind, baby. Okay, that's cool. Because honestly, I, I kind of hate that theme song. But whatever. <sighs> Man. I, I kind of hope he calls in. Because I want to hear like a drunken, excited explanation on, on what he saw tonight. But we actually got a jam-packed lineup anyway. This is our 150th episode. Which, to me, I'm still kind of shocked. Like, damn. We're like only 50 away from 200. It's still surreal. Because I remember when we started. Just in a tiny-ass hot room. I was coming all the way from the South Bay to Northridge. He was getting off work. And we would just talk. And now, it's become much more polished. Much more... I'll say desirable. And I'm kind of mad I didn't go to the Raiders game. That's mostly what I'm really mad about. Like, I kind of wish I would have just said, like, forget it and just called off work. Actually, I wasn't even at work today. But I could have just made a weekend of it and just went. I don't know how to feel. I kind of feel like a a fake Raiders fan right now. I'm not going to lie. And I'm never going to actually admit that I said this. If somebody pulls the audio up again. So if you didn't hear me say that. Well you just didn't hear me say that. But. Anyway. Shout out to all our affiliates man. Obviously. First and foremost. Good news radio. Good news sports. The conglomerate. It really is manifesting itself. Like. Every sports show. On this station is really dope. And we build them, and it's exciting to see. Uh, most importantly, it's just exciting to see everybody win. Everybody's winning in different ways, so that's always dope. And most importantly, shout out X Squad Affiliates, Fremo. I hope everything with that situation works out. But yeah, it's shout out to everyone who supported us, who's held it down for us. Who's listened to either Pete being monotone or me talking way too much or rambling. And you stuck with us. So for that, I appreciate y'all. Wow. I always picked the wrong button. Wait. Okay. Wait. There we go. There we go. All right. So on to the the top news aside from you know the fact that the Raiders just totally managed to not like choke I'm I'm still shook anyway so first things first uh, something that everybody in the league should be afraid of Josh Gordon got picked up off waivers by the Seattle Seahawks and if you saw what Russell Wilson did last week literally throwing for five touchdowns winning the game in overtime DK Metcalf, who has like 81 agility, but like stupid track speed, and it looks like the freaking Terminator. And then you got Tyler Lockett, both of them having huge games, winning their game last week 46 to 40 in overtime. Like, I'm. It's going to be a problem with Josh Gordon. Like, imagine like Mike Williams, but like the final form of Mike Williams. Like, they have a bunch of genetic freaks on that team. And you throw in Josh Gordon. I mean, yeah, they lost Will Dis- Will Disley for the year, their tight end. But they pick up Josh Gordon. And they already have DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. You can't really double one person. Like, and I'm amazed that no other teams really went that hard to get Josh Gordon. They just let him go to a Super Bowl contender. And now it's really looking like the Rams' window to make the playoffs might be shut. Because I don't see how they're covering three guys who could score every time they touch the ball at receiver and having to deal with Russell Wilson. Like, he's truly an MVP candidate. Like, aside from him, Lamar Jackson, who we'll get to, just... The renaissance of black quarterbacks is truly amazing right now. And Russell Wilson is leading the charge. I just hope he doesn't uh, do any more goofy stuff 
like he did when he was laying in the bed with Sierra talking about that deal. Like that 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 shit was corny. Like Russell Wilson's not that guy. I mean, somewhere future is probably just kicking himself. But hey, whatever. Future dropped an album, and mm, I guess he's finally realizing. You know what? I am a piece of shit, and accepting it. So there's that. But next on the list, man. I'm going to just give this man a standing ovation because he deserves it. And I'm tired of people shitting on his name. Cam Newton, quarterback for... Oh, look at that. Someone just came through the door. Hopefully not to murder me because that would suck. Did you close the door back? Cool. It's served. Every time I walk in, first off, we should have clapping. Now. There shouldn't be clapping because you're late. I know. I'm, how you just? I'll be on missions. What you get the trap that? beat. You hear that mic? Oh, I'm so cooked off. Huh? Um, I can't um, sit on Pete's seat. It's not weird. that official yet. Nah, it's just I already set your mic up. Well, I have brownies. Is That's that all you have to say. Oh, okay. But nah, uh, we're we're gonna get to some things because uh. I think the viewing audience wants to know a couple things about Serve and her notebook. What and about if you, me? If you're the option out are, if you're 12 or not. You can't see my notebook. We're gonna uh, gonna have to gonna have to display some of the details of whatever the hell's in that notebook, whatever notes you be taking. But anyway, uh, back to by the way, in case you didn't know, Serve, hmm. the Raiders won. In, yeah, uh, in I know. O- in yeah. Oakland. Yeah. Beat the Chargers. Yeah. They're just going to have to go to London now because nobody wants them. It's crazy because, like, right after that win, there's, like, a bunch of, like, uh, articles. There are, like, a bunch of articles that are, like, oh, the Raiders are going to go to the playoffs. I'm, like, chill, B. <laughs> it's not, I want it to happen. I mean, I'm not, a, like, a Raiders fan, but it's just, like. Don't jinx it. I'm, I'm I shocked, feel like though. I feel like Raiders. Raiders fans are kind of like Dodgers fans. I mean, obviously, kind of. That's disrespectful. I mean, look, most of them, if you're a Dodger fan, then most likely you're a Raider fan. Uh, That's only, that's LA people though, but like, and they always are like, they're always like, oh, the Dodgers are going to take it to the series and. But the Dodgers choke every year. I mean, and they some, they do make it to the series, but they never. Like, the Dodgers choke every year. Yeah. The Raiders have sucked, like, most of my life. My 27 years on this earth, they've been trash most of those years. Yeah. And the fact that they're squeaking out wins. I mean, the Chargers really aren't that good. But the fact that they've won five games when they were absolutely terrible last year. And they tore the roster apart and... Cleveland Farrell finally paid off at two and a half sacks. It's kind of shocking. Um, so we'll table that. Uh, Cam Newton, and this is probably going to hurt Pete, and this is going to hurt Keith too. So sorry, Keith. But Cam Newton got put on injured reserve. He's done for the year in Carolina and possibly done forever as a Carolina Panther. This might be it. Christian McCaffrey out here possibly going to win MVP. Arguably the greatest running back ever. I've never seen a white, I mean, the, the greatest white running back ever. And one of the best running backs in the league. I still say Zeke is eventually going to be Saquon. But Christian McCaffrey is literally going to reset the running back market and skill. Like, you're going to have to, eventually, you're going to have to pay receivers and running backs almost the same if not more, because of what Christian McCaffrey is doing for the Panthers' offense by himself. And it's just kind of sad to see, like, it's crazy, the irony. Like, arguably one of the greatest black quarterbacks of all time pushed out of a, pushed off the team that he led to a Super Bowl to be replaced by a white running back who was, like, dope as hell. I'm shocked, honestly. Like, the irony is really foul. But there we are. So he's on IR. I don't even see how 